Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan. Uh, long time no see. Um, as mentioned on the last video, um, I had to go out of town with family, so I was not able to make these videos. Um, but I'm back today. Um, and first day back, I, you know, wanted to get this video out because tonight is the last five game slate that we'll have for a while. Um, yeah, and without any further ado, let's dive in. And yeah, before I do that, um, if you like these videos, please, please hit the like button below. It would mean great amount to me and uh, True DFS that sponsors my videos. So thank you for that. But yeah, let's dive in. I think we have a really good slate and we have really good leans. Um, I like our database analysis today. Um, and uh, some extra playoff motivation that I'll talk about that most people don't uh, really look at, um, just given the timing of these games in the LCK, especially. I think it is very important to go over that uh, for the spring split playoffs. Um, but yeah, let's go into the LPL first, though, because that is um, those are the Chinese games are the most um, kill upside games generally, as you guys know. So I think it's important to dive into those first. Um, so first we have IG versus Ultra Prime. IG is a favorite, decent size favorite at minus 260. Um, and Ultra Prime is the underdog at plus 190. Both teams have been up and down, in my opinion. Uh, IG has been a little bit better. Um, compared to Ultra Prime, in my opinion, um, IG had started up off the season really, really hot, um, and people thought they were just gonna keep winning. But I mean, this roster is not that great, in my opinion. I think it's okay. Um, YSKM has been a pleasant surprise uh, in the top lane for IG, and uh, he's been the best player, in my opinion, for IG, and it's helped a lot. Um, their jungler Gideon and Dove um, coming from Korea. Um, having YSKM just doing his thing in the top lane. And also in the bottom lane, On and Wink have been pretty good, pretty solid in my opinion. So, um, And then they're going up against Ultra Prime, though, with Doggo and Baolan in the in the bottom lane, um, which I'm not too scared of. I think Doggo has shown um, some games that he can carry uh, this season, but I'm, I'm not a huge believer. I think he's fallen off um, quite a bit. Uh, from his PSG days, um, and then Ning and Ching, um, the the jungle and the mid synergy is not quite there, um, in my opinion. I think Gideon and Dove won't have any problem handling them, in my opinion. But Harry is no joke. Harry's been pretty good, in my opinion, for Ultra Prime. Um, but overall, like I think, I mean, just like I said, based on the form and based on the roster, IG should be able to win this. Um, and they are a good sizable favorite, as mentioned at minus two sixty. Um, so yeah, let's look at the stats real quick so the total kills upside kill upside for over under it was set at it set at 25 kills um and then combined kills per minute um for both teams is averaged at 0.81 ig uh playing a little bit faster slightly faster than ultra prime and then yeah and then it gets kind of interesting you know when you look at the other key metrics that i look at like jungle control percentage is that even um, so like Gideon, like I said, and 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 Ning um, are about even. Gideon, like I said, I, I mean, I'm not a huge, I'm not huge impressed with Gideon. I mean, even when he was in the LCK, he, he wasn't one of my, uh, you know, preferred junglers in my opinion. You know how much emphasis I put on junglers, right? Because I they really control the map at least in the early game, um, and and it keeps a pressure on on the other laners um, that and that are in the other lanes. So, um, but yeah, just looking at those metrics for both of junglers respectively, they're about even in the lane control percentage. IG leads them, uh, leads Ultra Prime by 1%. And then the rest, yeah, I mean, IG, you know, um, has an advantage in both of those other two key metrics that you see on the screen. Um. So as mentioned, I think IG should win. IG should win two to one, I think. But uh I think it's gonna sorry, I'm gonna put this up here. Be a closer game than people think. Metrics show that Ultra Prime can put up a fight versus IG. 
Um, I think it depends on the bottom line with Doggo. So I think if Ultra Prime does pull off an upset, Doggo is going to do really well. As mentioned, Dove, I mean, he's okay, but he doesn't die a lot. Um, but I think in the bottom lane, I think for Ultra Prime to win, I think it's ultimately going to come down to Doggo and the jungler. Because really, like as I mentioned, jungle control percentage is about even. So Ultra Prime will have to take advantage of that. <sighs> Excuse me. All right. The next matchup is JDG versus OMG. JDG is a big, big favorite at minus 750, and then OMG at plus one. At plus six, 460. My apologies. Um, sneezing. Uh, yeah, JDG is at uh, minus 750. And we have the regular starters. JDG has been probably the best LPL team, um, hands down, I think. With the addition of Ruler, we didn't know how things were going to shake out with communication issues and stuff like that. But with Kanavi being able to speak Korean, I think JDG has gotten better and better. Literally every game, every series that I've watched, um, it's scary. <laughs> I think I think JDG right now is the best team uh in the world over T1 and DLCK in my opinion. So uh but yeah, I like JDG a lot. Um and you know how I feel about Aki, the jungler for OMG. And it is supported by uh the metrics that I showed you earlier. Um but first the total kill upside it's pretty good i mean 24 over under and then 0 0.80 for combined kills per minute jdg likes to play faster than omg um and jdg has an advantage in every single metric uh including significant jungle control percentage difference in favor of jdg at almost 8% and then jungle Learn difference uh, for earned golds per minute at plus 52 by Kanavi over Aki that I mentioned. So um, I think there's going to be a huge, huge jungle gap um, difference um, in favor of JDG. And I think that will uh, permeate throughout the map um, onto the laners. Um, so I think JDG should win here 2-0. to zero. So that's what I'm going to go with. Decent kill upside. So as mentioned, I think Kanavi has a really good matchup today against Aki. So I like his chances to score over whatever his kill threshold is. And then let me see, Knight versus Cream, Able Ruler. Yeah, I mean, Cream. Able. Both are okay, right? Like, I, th I still think JDG wins, yeah. So I think it's a pretty good kill upside there. All right, the next matchup in China um, is NIP versus FPX. Um, the kill upside is pretty good. It's a set at 25 over under and plus 7, 8 for the combined kills per minute which is similar to the other two LPL matchups that I just talked about, um, but slightly lower. Um, all the key metrics do favor NIP, um, I think, which, you know, are, which is supported by the odds, Vegas odds by uh, minus 230 in favor of NIP, but they're not that different though. Like they are slightly different. They are slightly better uh, in favor of NIP. Um, so I think it is a toss up. Like I think FPX definitely has a shot today. Unfortunately, they just have not had a really good season uh, for FPX and their jungler has been up and down a lot. I think in hacker, hacker, if hacker starting again today. Yep. So I think NIP should win two to one, but metrics show that it will be a toss up. So FPX is definitely a live dog tonight. It hurts me to say that because FPX looks has 
looked horrible. So uh, yeah, I think I think um, FPX is a live dog. I think they're they make a good GPP play, just based on the metrics that I just looked at. Um, and yeah, and mention uh, before I go over to Korea, uh, for Ultra Prime, I think you know they make an interesting GPP play as well. I think um, I'm pretty confident that JDG will win. Um, and then, like I said, Ultra Prime and FPX, I think both are live dogs tonight. In the LCK, we have Left Sandbox versus KT. Uh, Sandbox, you know, has been up and down as well, but both of these teams are pretty good. I think both of these teams could make to the top six of the LCK standings uh, to go to the playoffs. Uh, down the road, um, KT has been pretty good, um, and Sandbox, like I said, they have they always. I mean, they have the potential to beat any team in the LCK, in my opinion, when they, you know, had everything on their cylinders. Um, in terms of kill upside for these for this matchup, um, it's okay. I mean, plus six. I mean, point six four. Um, it's not as good as it's probably. I think it is the lowest. Yeah, it is the lowest among all the games tonight. So maybe we should face Sandbox and KT. I don't know. We'll see how the how that goes. But um, depending on what kind of lean we have in terms of match prediction, I think that can <clears throat> be interesting to choose pick and choose there, uh, which games to stack and which picks uh, teams to stack. Um, but in terms of the match prediction for this match between Sandbox and KT, uh, you see that all the key metrics favor uh, KT except for the jungler's diff jungler difference, right? So Willer actually has been pretty good um, compared to Cuz individually. Um, but overall, like I think team wise, KT has been a little bit better than Sandbox, but they're not by very much, right? So I think that also makes uh, Sandbox a live dog, as well. KT should win here, two to one, but Sandbox is a live dog tonight. But on the with low kill upside. So yeah, I mean, so that's the caution, right? That's the risk that you may uh, have to take on if you are picking Sandbox or KT, just based on the fact that, I mean, this is the lowest uh, projected kill upside game on the slate, on a five-game slate. So naturally, I think the ownership is going to be low on both of those those teams as well. So I think it's a good good game theory selection there. And then, yeah, last game on the slate is between Gen G versus uh, Fred and Breon. Uh, Breon's interesting, right? Like, I think Breon has been so up and down, um, but I just feel like Breon has no chance tonight. Um, I mentioned this earlier. I kind of hinted at it, um, but Gen G has a chance uh, to qualify for the Springs Play playoffs. Um, and then they have, so yeah, they have the extra motivation uh, to be able to uh, win 2-0 to zero today, I think. Um, I am not going to have any Fred and Breon. Also because... Also because... Bra, uh, Fred and Breon has a very low CKPM. So I do think Genji should win 2-0. to zero, um, Just with extra motivation to make... To qualify for the playoffs early on. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, the gaps are too big. I think Genji should win. And with extra motivation, I think they will take care of business with a two to zero sweep tonight. But in terms of kill upside, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's okay. Genji uh, should be a decent play, um, safe, safer play, I think. I don't know about the kill upside with Fred and Breon kind of reducing that. Um, they, you know, are set at their CKPM is set at 0.57, which is the lowest um, that we have on the slate. But yeah, Genji should take care of business nonetheless. But yeah, so that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys have any other questions, uh, please, please let me know. Again, if you like the uh, video, please, 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 please hit the like button below. Um, that would mean a lot to us. And yeah. Thank you very much and have a good one. Bye-bye.